cooking in the boot. Tomorrow LSU has a big game, so I've got just the recipe for you. Pulled pork. It may even do wonders to help your wife go into labor. To get started, I'll go through the ingredients that you need. First and most importantly, we have a Boston butt bone-in roast. Next, we have one onion sliced, one green bell pepper sliced, three cloves of garlic, your favorite Cajun seasoning, one bottle of a beta root beer, one bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. To go ahead and start, what we're gonna do is make a few slits into the pork and stuff your sliver garlic. This is gonna give it a little bit extra flavor as it cooks. And just work your way around the whole full pork, making sure to get that garlic in as much as possible. The deeper you put these holes, the better. That way the flavor can really get throughout the roast. Alrighty, that's stuffed pretty well. So our next step is just gonna to be to take your favorite Cajun roll and do just that. Rub it all over the pulled pork. So right here I have your standard size crock pot set on low. So this is, recipe goes pretty quickly. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take half a bottle of your barbecue sauce, put it at the bottom of the crock pot, half of your root beer, put it at the bottom of the crock pot, half of your onions, half of your bell peppers, and you guessed it, bottom of the crock pot. From there, you're going to take your pork, put it into the crock pot, and you're going to just repeat that process. So half of the barbecue sauce, the remaining half of the root beer, the bell peppers, and the onions. All you're gonna do from here is cover it and let it cook overnight for 12 to 15 hours on low. You really can't mess this up and we'll check on it again tomorrow morning. So once the Boston butt has been cooking for 12 to 15 hours and it's really tender, we're gonna go ahead and switch it over to low until we're ready to eat it. And what we're gonna do now is head on over to the stove to make a great side of macaroni and cheese. Okay, to get started with our macaroni and cheese, we'll start off with the ingredients that we'll need. First off, you need one pound of large elbow noodles cooked according to package, eight ounces of sharp cheddar shredded, eight ounces of mozzarella shredded, and one stick of butter shredded, eight ounces of Velveeta cheese, one tablespoon of your favorite Cajun seasoning, three-fourths cup of milk, and one-third cup of reserved pasta water from when you make the noodles. So you'll go ahead and you'll put the burner on a medium heat, and you'll add the noodles to the pot. You go ahead and add your milk, so that's three-fourths cup of milk. You add your pasta water, one-third cup of reserved pasta water, and give it a stir. Just making sure nothing sticks to the bottom. At this point, what you do is go ahead and add your eight ounces of Velveeta cheese. When you see some meltage, like right now, you can go ahead and add the rest of the cheese. So this is the cheese and the butter going into the pot at one time. And again, you're gonna give it a good stir. Just to spread that cheese and butter throughout the noodles. At this point, it's really just you keep stirring it 
probably three minutes, I would say. Before we leave, you can go ahead and add your tablespoon of Cajun seasoning. And just keep stirring it. Once you have a creamy consistency of with the cheese all melted, it's pretty much done. You can go ahead and hit off. Um, one note I do want to mention is, depending on the type of cheese you use and the way you shred it, sometimes it can take, it may need a little more milk to come out this creamy. So don't be afraid to add maybe a cup, um, you know, maybe a fourth of a cup at a time up to a cup more of milk to get it this creamy consistency. So what I'm doing now is adding it to a nine by 13 Pyrex dish that's been buttered. So there is butter on the sides. You go ahead and flatten it out. Top it with a little bit more of sharp cheddar. This time it's finely shredded. Cover it up with some brown. Put it in the oven for 20 minutes. Uncover it, put it in the oven for 10 more minutes at 350 degrees, and then you'll be enjoying yourself some homemade macaroni and cheese, and you may never go back to the box stuff. The macaroni and cheese just got out of the oven and it's time to plate it. So what do we have here is a little toasted bun. Gonna get some pulled pork. Put it on the bun. We're gonna have Poppy today, helping me with the macaroni and cheese. Put it right here. All right. All right. And we're gonna go ahead and taste it. Poppy, you wanna taste the macaroni? Give it a taste. Give it a taste. It's not ready. It's it is really good. It's and if you remember in the beginning, I said if your wife's pregnant, you might want to make this meal. We've had two friends go into labor shortly after eating this meal on two separate occasions.